Jason Cadence, you are a writer producer for various TV shows over the years, uh, such as Friday Night Lights, Parenthood, and now Rise. Um, uh, let's go straight to Rise. What inspired you to bring this story to life on TV? Well, you know, it kind of started with a conversation I had with Bob Greenblatt at NBC and Jeffrey Seller, uh, who is uh, my fellow producer on the show, who, who uh, is a Broadway producer who's done great things like Hamilton <laughs> and, and, uh, and shows. And, you know, the way it started was Jeffrey had read this book called Drama High, uh, which is a true story about a um, drama teacher in uh, Levittown, Pennsylvania, who took over this, uh, he was an English te teacher who took over a drama program uh, at a public high school and taught there for 44 years and ran this program for 44 years and and turned it from this sort of, you know, kind of underfunded and kind of overlooked program into this incredibly nationally recognized drama program. And it was really, really inspiring. And um, that, 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 that's both, both Lou Volpe, who the book was sort of based on and the story itself. It was really inspiring to me. It was just like a simple story about um, somebody who really wanted to affect change and 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 make a difference and and set about to do it in this, in this sort of um, gr grassroots way that I found very appealing. And I just loved it from the very even honestly before I got to meet Lou or I even read the book. I just on a just on a the uh, just had an instinct that this was a a story that I was uh, that I was passionate to tell, and I thought I could I could do a good job with it. And um, the the show is actually much deeper than what people might realize when they start watching it. I mean, at least it is for me. But it says something very powerful about um, how essential the arts are to society. Talk right. us through that aspect of what that show represents. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's about how you know. Um, you know, it's funny. I think a lot of people kind of think and uh, that, you know, the arts are great, but they're sort of secondary when it comes to uh, education. They're secondary to things like math and English and all, all, of, all of those things. And I understand that, how people would think that. But then what happens is then the arts programs are the first things to get cut in, in, in public education. And um, the first things to get cut from, you know, uh, government funding, um, um, and um, and it's a huge, huge loss because a show like Rise really demonstrates how deeply vital these programs are. You know, they're not. It's not just about like doing theater in high school or or playing music in high school or or doing painting or photography in high school. It's not just for people who are going to become actors or photographers or artists. It's a way of expression. It's a way of figuring out who you're going to be. It's a. It's a. You know. It's sort of this. You know. Really important part of. You know. Becoming an adult of learning to. You know. Uh, of figuring things out. And um, so. You know. I. I, I was really just, you know, I myself, when I sort of met with Lou and, and read the book and started to hear people's stories, I was moved by, you know, just how many people told me that, you know, they had a Lou Volpe in their lives and it changed their lives. And um, what particularly attracted to me about, what attracted me to this story was it wasn't a story about people who, are in a high school theater and they go and they're necessarily going to go on to become Broadway stars. They're just going to be people who go, you know, who grow up and maybe go to college, maybe get a job, maybe, you know, but um, how the, the, how the, what Lou sort of taught them enriched their lives and made their, made them feel their lives could be a, almost like a, a bigger version than what they expected it to be before they did that. And that, that was that. And so that's what inspired me. And those are the stories that I really wanted to try to tell. It's a show. That's what I wanted the show to kind of, uh, to be about. And it's very fitting that this show is, 
it really fits quite beautifully into your credits uh, over the years because you have for many years focused on young people and their stories um, either in small town America or just in in like every city so to speak mm -hmm. and I'm right. very curious about it. like when you think of Jason Kadem's work it's it's always about young people and what they deal with and how, how they struggle to kind of come of age. Why is that so important to you to, to keep telling that story in different ways? Well, you know, when I think about a show like Rise, you know, I do think of it about, as about young people, but I actually don't think about it, about it as just about young people. Same thing about Friday Night Lights, same thing as, about, uh, as a, a parenthood. You know, I feel like I, I want to kind of observe all of the characters, whether they're the parents in the stories or the adults in the stories or, or the adolescents, I want to observe them with the same kind of respect in a way. Um, you know, I do, and I don't, I want to kind of keep it away from it being a story that is really focused on only the, the high school, the kids in high school and how the adult characters are just the people who get in their way or are the obstacle or the opposite where it's like, you know, they're, you're not, you're seeing like, you know, adults with kids and the kids aren't really, really three dimensional. To me, the beauty of all of these shows and what I aspire to make all these shows it, it, and what excites me about it is that all of these characters are, are, are nuanced and, and, and continue to grow and continue to evolve as, as, as we um, watch the show. So that's really what I kind of try to do. And, you know, the idea of, of why so, why so many shows with, these teen characters or, or it's, you know, I just think, you know, that is the, uh, it's such a, an incredibly um, interesting time in somebody's life. It's when you're both a child and an adult at the same time, and you're making these decisions that are going to, and you're finding things out about yourself that are going to inform your whole life. It's also a time when so much growth happens over, those several years that it's just very works makes for very good television because you're we're really watching somebody uh evolve in uh in in such an, a crazy way such a crazy big way over the let's say several years that you see them on a tv show so it's just it's very uh you know there's a lot of just opportunity in that way and also you know the other thing is that teenagers you know, they make mistakes. You know, they, they, they try things. They, 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 they do things that maybe they shouldn't have done. They have to, they're figuring stuff out. Um, and, and I think that also makes for, um, to me, those are, you know, those are like very human stories and, and uh, very, very much stories that I always feel are, what I always kind of come back to as, as, as things that I feel like compelled to um, write about. Yeah, and given that you that's what you're compelled to write about, I have a sneaking suspicion, as you are a father, as am I, that the way that I get into a lot of your work, um, you know, over the years, Parenthood About a Boy, Rise in particular, is the relationship between father and child. It's something that I've noticed that you've very much focused on um, with a lot of heart and soul. What, why? Yeah. Why is that? Why is it so important to you? Uh, you know, I just think because um, these are... Uh, times you know, starting with Friday Night Lights and on all and onto all those other shows. I mean, these were times when I was, you know, a parent. You know, when I was a parent, and um, it's a funny thing when you become a parent. You see things from both angles. Like I could, you know, you start to really understand what it's like to be a parent and and the joys of that, the sometimes wrenching parts of that. But you also very much still always re very much it's who you were as a child, as a son, as a daughter, as a, you know, is also very much alive in you. And so I find, you know, the really, I'd love telling stories that get into these, these family stories lines, you know, and, and uh, you know, fathers and sons, fathers and daughters, uh, mothers and, and, and their children um, as well. Um, I just find it very moving, you know, honestly, I just find it very moving um, both in, life you know when i talk to when i look talk to my wife and we we like are figuring out our parenting stuff and talking to friends 
I find that to be the stuff that is compelling, right? And it's like, there aren't many TV shows that are just about that, you know, um, just about the relationships. And I've been very lucky, I think, to be able to do shows that have really been focusing on these sort of, uh, you know, those sort of seminal, um, you know, kinds of um, relationships, family um, structures and, and friendships and all of those types of things. And to me, that's the stuff that we wind up that that is at the end of the day you know what's important to us um as people what we what we're constantly thinking about what we're you know trying to um you know you know figure out in our own lives and that's you know obviously it's very um easy not easy to write about it but there's there's just constantly material because you're drawing from your own life and you're drawing from the lives of you you know the writers that you get to work with and um and and you know these are that's kind of the way you sort of try to make these stories feel uh, relatable and, and and kind of personal so when i first um started watching when i was in a premiere i was really like surprised by the casting i thought okay this is this is a gamble that you and the producers and you know and the, the team had taken with certain people that we attach with other projects like Josh, for example, you know, How I Met Your Mother and Moana and things like that. But as we I think we're almost at episode eight now. So we're almost at the end of the season. And and for me, it, obviously the casting has worked really beautifully. So obviously that was a very difficult challenge though, I I expect to find the right people for those roles, yeah. like any show. But do you have any particular challenges that you faced in the casting? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, um, the casting of this show was, there was something charmed about the casting of it, you know. Um, we were, we just went with our instincts a lot. You know, we worked with Bernie Telsey and company, his, that casting, uh, well, well, I've never worked with Bernie before with, and, and his, he and his team just, they're such an incredible, um, you know, um, casting agency and they have, you know, what, what was wonderful about it was they have um, offices um, both in Los Angeles and in New York. And, and, um, and so it was great because during pilot season, we were able to like simultaneously kind of find, you know, uh, simultaneously cast on both coasts. And it was very important for this show because there were so many, because of the musical aspect of it, we were leaning very heavily into the, um, you know, uh, sort of theater actors, especially for the younger roles on the ensemble. So they tended to be in New York. And yet finding our lead, you know, uh, somebody like, you know, Josh was, 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 was here. Um, so it was really just, you know, I would say it, it wound up being this very, everything fell into place. We went with our, uh, the, as the producers, we kind of, and director, we went with our gut and our instinct about people, um, um, you know, when they seem to connect with a character in a certain way. And um, I love this cast so much. I mean, I just, it's one of the things that makes it such a joy to do this show is there's a particular, it's, oh, you know, I mean, I've been lucky to work with such great actors and always have casts that were, yeah. you know, um, so, so invest in the material. But there's something particularly about this material because the material is so close to so many of the actors in the show. Rosie Perez, for example, has spent the last 26 years, um, her real passion in life has been working this nonprofit where she's been helping students, um, high school students and teenagers from, um, you know, um, um, in challenging situations and, and teaching them the arts. And this has been her life. So when she saw this character and she saw this role, she was like, oh, this is me. This is my role, you know? Um, and when, you know, she came in and talked about it and auditioned for it and read for it, there was no question about it. You know, when I sat down and talked with, to, to, to Josh about it, you know, we had a, a, you know, like a meeting to talk about, about it. And it became a conversation about, not so much of, I mean, it started with talking about the role in the show, but it really became about like how much we believed and in, in the idea of putting this out there in the world, putting this story out there in the world right now. And um, so it's just like, that was one of the things that was, that's been such a wonderful experience is, you know, everybody seems to have such um, 
um, a, a commitment to telling the story in the cast from Josh and Rosie to every member of the un, of the younger cast and the, the ensemble. And that's been really, really um, made it wonderful. And, yeah. you know, one of the things I like about the shows that um, I, I do is like, I, I really love this, the, the sort of the big ensemble, you know, and I, I mean, that, <clears throat> I think that's true of, definitely true of Friday Night Lights and definitely true of Parenthood and definitely true of Rise. I love that. I love having like multiple storylines going on at once, you know, lots of balls in the air. And I think what I'm excited about, like, cause you were talking about now getting to the seventh and eighth, eighth episode of the show, what starts to happen and it's happened on Friday Night Lights and it happened on Parenthood and I feel it happening on Rise is there's a certain point around episode five, six, seven, where it really starts to just like um, go on, you know, like 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 catch fire, you know, because you have all of these characters that in the pilot you're like trying to keep up. Wait, this one is this one's daughter, but he's having an affair with that one, but blah blah. And you're trying to like keep track of it, and I understand that's challenging, and and I in a in a weird way that might be like problematic in a way because it's sort of like the first couple of episodes you know you're you're kind of trying just trying to catch up but i think it just has it just basically it's it 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 leads to such powerful storytelling because once you really get invested in all these characters it's very exciting and i feel like um that was you know one of the things that i felt you know so exciting about doing the show is you know, we started doing a storyline that started in episode six with this character, Sasha, where you reveal that she's pregnant. And um, this actress, um, Erin, who, 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 who is such a wonderful actress, but up and still, up until episode six, you know, she was just in the ensemble and you don't really hardly, you know, maybe a few lines here and there, you really didn't get to know her. And that's exciting. You know, we you know then we get to do from there to the rest of the season. You really get to, you know, you find out she's got a lot that she's dealing with. She becomes a very important character in the show, and I think we're we 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 can continue to do that and hopefully knock wood into season two if we get lucky enough. If, if I'm lucky enough to get a season two, I know there's lots of other uh, you know people who are. You know, spending a lot of time sort of singing the songs in the background, who I know are wonderful actors, and so I'm excited. That's you know, just it's just something that's very exciting about doing this show in particular. And um, when you say connecting with characters, it reminds me that um, with your co-network stablemate, this is us, as an example, it's really in right now to have that emotional, like it's like must cry TV, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. But I reckon that I, I want to put this out there. I think you are actually the pioneer of this. Because I can recall many episodes of many of your shows that have made me tear up, which is slightly <laughs> embarrassing. And I'm wondering, given, I mean, you've talked at length about connecting with characters, but is there another secret to how you're able to really kind of gut punch the audience with things that really mean something to them, maybe because they're seeing themselves? I don't know. What do you think? Why do people cry so much at your shows? Um, I, that's funny. Um, I don't, I think that um, it starts in the, um, the breaking the stories in the writer's room. And that's really where I think, I think that element of it really begins. And, you know, like the first job that I got was on uh, a show called My So-Called Life, yeah. which was uh, created by Winnie Holtzman and produced by Edgewick and Marshall Herskovitz. And this was like a, you know, like a, lucky like an incredibly lucky break for me because not only did i get a job writing um which was like really important for me <laughs> but also i happened to get a job writing on this incredibly brilliant show where i kind of learned to um you know to like look at these characters from the inside out you know and it really started there and i've just always tried to do that and so in the writer's room we really try to like tell stories where we are digging as deep as possible. I mean, it's really important for us to, in the writer's room, it's it's important for me to create an environment where everybody feels completely open to bring themselves um, to it, to bring themselves in a personal way to the storytelling. And I think like it gets born there and then, you know, and then 
you go through the process and obviously we have these incredible actors who um, bring so much more than you ever could imagine to, to these stories. But it, I think it sort of starts there and it's just like an approach to storytelling, which is about like, um, what would really happen here? What would somebody really feel here? To like look at every character in the scene, not just the one that is driving the story forward, but at, you know, not not giving yourself the permission to just say, "Oh, that character just needs to say this," so that that the other character can say that. It's that you know, you really try to observe everybody and 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 hopefully make it feel real. And you know, what I feel like I very much want like one of the big compliments that I've gotten about the shows is people feel like, oh, I know these people. These are people that I know. These are people that I come to know and love. And um, and that's what I hope to do. And, you know, frankly, it's like, it is, that is what happens. The simple answer to what you're saying, which I should have just said, <laughs> you know, is just, and maybe you can edit this, but um, the simple answer is that what happens is you fall in love with your characters. Yeah, that's yeah. what happens. You fall in love with your characters, and as you, when you fall in love with them, um, and that's a combination of what you do in the room with what the actors bring to it, and that's the, the sort of alchemy of it. And you fall in love with them, and as you fall in love with them, things just naturally become start to become emotional as you start to sort of tell the tell tell stories about them because you care about them so much. Yeah, and I, I'm not going to lie, I think I pretty much fell in love with Tammy Taylor, but that's a whole other... <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of, before I let you go, um, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Friday Night Lights because it started off very slowly, but it always had critical support. By the end of its run, it was pretty much a, a really big success story. And it's one of the... A lot of people say it's one of the best shows ever made and it finally got some Emmy attention. It got a drama series nomination. You won an Emmy. It was a huge moment for all of us fans and obviously for you, but take us back to that show and the legacy that it's left and the success that it had at the Emmys. Right. Well, you know, it's funny because Friday Night Lights was always the show that from the beginning, you know, um, was got great critical recognition, but struggled to find an audience. And I think it was always a show that people thought, oh, you know, it's a football show. It's not for me. And I just remember like ad nauseum trying to tell people whether it was in an interview or literally like running into somebody at the supermarket. No, no, you'll like the show. You don't have to love football or, you know, and, um, um, and, but that message got a, took a long time to kind of um, to, 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 for people to kind of get. And I think over the seasons of doing the show, um, you know, um, you know, I think people started to discover it. And so that was something that was very exciting about it. Um, I remember one of the seasons we were, um, one of the seasons we were, um, there was a, there was a, like a, there was like this kind of like rumor that we were going to do really well. I can't remember which season it was that we were going to do really well with the, with, in the Emmys. And so I was in Texas and we were shooting and, um, you know, I woke up at some ungodly hour to hear the Emmy announcements because people were telling me, oh, you're going to get nominated. This one's going to get nominated. Nobody got nominated. Wow. So it was just kind of we got used to like, OK, it's OK. That's 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 fine. We don't need that. But it was very it was amazing that in the final season we did get that sort of recognition. And it was so exciting because it was I really thought of it as all of those nominations that we got in the Emmys that we, we and the, the couple of Emmys we actually won, I always thought of that as this was not for that season. This was not for that episode. This yeah. was for the entire series. And that made it really, honestly, extra special to me. I felt it was like this well-earned um, acknowledgement, um, you know, after um, all this time. And, you know, of course, you know, Friday Night Lights, is you know this underdog story you know that so it, it's kind of appropriate in a way that that's the way it kind of worked it with 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 um you know sort of the awards recognition as well yeah and and now you're on rise which is also typically an underdog story and good luck with that congratulations and we you never know it might be on the same trajectory thank you jason for your time really <laughs> thank you so much appreciate it it's really fun talking to you thank you <laughs>